was on the move in search of safety and six months on Christmas Island in detention, Muhammad was finally transferred to Sydney. However, his future still remained uncertain. Muhammad was given a temporary bridging visa while he waited for his refugee claim to be assessed. He was determined to make a new life for himself, but his uncertain immigration status made him vulnerable, excluding him from support services that would help him find stability and independence. Muhammad constantly felt like an outsider. He also worried about his family scattered around the world. In Myanmar, where Rohingya continued to be persecuted, in Bangladesh and on Manus Island, where his brother was stuck in indefinite detention. He had to tell painful details of his story many times to immigration officials, lawyers and caseworkers. He felt he couldn't escape his past experiences or move on with his future. He feared he would remain in a crippling limbo forever. Dalal and her family had also experienced many changes after being resettled to a small Australian town which felt a ward away from their past. They worked hard to settle into their new home. The children were enrolled at the school and Dalal and Kudeda in English classes. But things became harder for Dalal. She worried she would never learn English or adapt to such a different culture. Traumatic memories came back in nightmares and she increasingly felt fearful of others, not knowing who she could trust. She spent many days crying, thinking of her daughter who remained missing, unable to even get out of bed. As Dalal's mental health worsened, her eldest daughter Nadia assumed much of the household responsibility, often interpreting for her parents at appointments instead of attending school. After years waiting, Muhammad was finally allowed to legally work, but most employers wouldn't consider him on a temporary visa. He had also stopped seeking medical assistance, unable to afford the cost of a specialist and confused about what he could access. Eventually, Muhammad began to experience symptoms of psychosis and was hospitalized. This was a terrifying time. The hospital reminded him of detention and every time the doctors and nurses came to speak to him, his stomach would drop in fear. When he was finally released from hospital, some friends in Muhammad's community were willing to support him, and he was also connected in with a support worker from the Rohingya community. Despite the many barriers he still faced, he was more connected and supported than he had been in years. After many difficult months, Dalal began to access practical mental health supports and eventually trauma counseling, both using interpreters. Alongside her family, she began to find ways to manage the symptoms of her depression, building on the resilience and strength that had brought her this far to help her through the next stage of her life. <laughs>